Today's video is going to be split up into two parts. Part one is going to be a full walkthrough and tour of our 2022 planners. Part two, we're going to show you guys some cool tips to help you put that planner to good use. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get into the tour, I just want to mention a couple of things. The planner is available in two colors. It's available in a neutral black. So if you're someone that likes things a bit more muted and a bit more toned down, everything here is basically grayscale. So you have more options to kind of customize whether or not you want color. But for today, we are going to walk through the pink and yellow and orange theme, which we call groovy. And so we can kick things off by flipping you guys right through the first few pages. So one of the things I want to mention is what makes our planner unique is the fact that it is a guided journal and planner combined. So you can see we've got about 800 pages here and the journal itself is split into three parts. Part one is all about reflecting and visualizing. Part two is where you actually plan and part three is where you look back on the previous year. So each month has its own theme. We're going to get into that shortly, but let's look at part one. So we are firm believers that you got to look back before you start looking forward. And so this is really where you reflect back on 2021. We have a new year self-assessment for you to really rank yourself across different areas in your life using the wheel of life. So we've got different categories here, career, family, finances, all of that. And you just really rank yourself on a scale of one to 10 and figure out what areas you want to improve. This is a really great exercise for you to just understand what goals you want to set for yourself, which brings us to our 2022 dashboard. This is where you set a mantra for the year and organize all those goals based on category. It's a great layout and you can come back to it throughout the year. So now moving on to part two, this is where you really get into the guts of the planner. So we've got a yearly view and a monthly view, and you'll notice that along with the monthly view, we've got what we call our monthly themes. So every month we have a new theme with a short passage for you to read and reflect on along with a challenge. This is just an opportunity for you to do something different, focus on self growth and actually visualize what you want your months to be. And so along with that, we've got our January dashboard. This is where you set your goals for the month. You would list out your routines, you write out all your habits, you've got a habit tracker as well as all your to do's. And if that's not enough space, we've also got a January brain dump sheet as well. So now we're getting into the daily view. So each date we've got one daily journal prompt as well as a daily planner template. So there are different journal prompts every single day of the year, as well as an area to list out what you're grateful for. Great time to just reflect and look back before you plan your day. This is what our daily planner template looks like. So on the left, you have an ability to time block and on the right, you can set a goal, list out an affirmation, write out your meals, as well as all your to do's for the day. So this is how the planner is set up entirely. So you'll notice every single day, we've got one journal prompt, which is completely different every single day of the year, as well as that daily planner template sheet. Again, same format, an area to list out your goals, January 3rd, same thing. So it really follows this exact format for the entire year. I'm not going to flip through every single page, but just want to give you guys an indicator or have a view into what that looks like. So I am just going to quickly show you guys what February looks like so you can get a bit of a feel for it as well. And you'll see here it's the exact same format as January. You've got your monthly view as well as your monthly theme, your monthly challenge. But obviously it's something different because that's part of our promise to you for every single month. We're growing and focusing on something else. So again, we're not going to go through the entire year, but just want to show you guys same format, brain dump sheet, daily journal prompts with your journaling reflection followed by the daily planner template itself. So now I'm just going to flip over to part three so you guys can get a view into what it looks like for the end of the year. So I'm just going to pull up December 31st, last day of the year for continuity. And now we're moving on to part three. So this is again where we review. We want to do the same thing we did in the beginning of the year. So assess ourselves again using the wheel of life and really understand where we were to where we are today. It's all about self-improvement and documenting that growth. We've got a similar year end review to look back on 2022, as well as an area for you to just close out the year and see how you progressed on your goals. And then that's pretty much the complete planner. We do have notes pages as well for any other notes you want to take throughout the year if you just need scrap paper in general. And that's pretty much the full planner, guys. So again, it is available in two colors. So you've got this color, which is called Groovy, and it's listed as that on our website, as well as the neutral tone. 
There are three ways you can use your planner once you've got it. You can use it on an iPad, desktop, or print it. Today's tutorial is mostly going to focus on using it on an iPad. It's likely where you'll get the most use out of it, but it is totally based on personal preference. You can also use it on desktop using the GoodNotes app or Notability, which we will cover shortly at the end. And of course, you can also print it, which is pretty self-explanatory, but the only thing to note is that it's about 800 pages, so it is a large file to print. So with that being said, let's kick off the tutorial with how to use it for the iPad. To get started, you'll want some sort of note-taking app. In this case, we're using GoodNotes, which is about $7 to $10. It's a one-time cost, but you have it for life. You can also use Notability, and we'll be sure to link down some Android options as well. So I do already have both of the planners loaded up, but if you do want to add one, just click the plus sign and import a file. So if you have it already added to your downloads, you could do it there. But what I think is a bit easier is just going straight from your email and importing it over. So the way our planners get delivered to you is through a PDF file and email. So if you just click the top right corner when you open it in your email, you will be able to open it directly in GoodNotes and it will prompt you. You can change the name if you want to, make it something more user-friendly or something you like, and then you just start the import. So what it does then is it just basically imports the complete file into your GoodNotes and you now have access to it. Once you've got it loaded up, you are good to get started. So. In the GoodNotes toolbar, you can see that there are pen options, there's highlighters, there's a lot that you can do to just be creative with colors and customize exactly how you want to be writing in the planner itself. So you can see here I'm tweaking, you know, the thickness of the pen, the color. Uh, when it comes to writing in it, a tip that I think is actually really helpful that I've heard before is using the zoom box tool. So if you just click that box in the top left corner, for some reason, writing in a zoomed in option makes it a lot easier and a lot neater. I know this isn't very neat right now, but if you take your time, it is way better than just kind of writing freehand. So you can again, just enter in whatever you want to write down and be creative with it, customize it however you like it, play around with fonts, colors, sizes, and really individualize it to make it your own. So what I'm gonna do now is just play around with the thickness of the pen. So just made it a bit thinner, I'm gonna change it up to be a bright blue, just to switch it around and you know see what I like aesthetically. You can obviously try out a whole bunch of different things and see what works best for you. This icon on the top right corner allows you to see it in the view mode. So it's what you can use to just switch pages and flip through the planner. And so for this page, for example, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of really make it your own. Um, I'll show you a few different methods and please tell me if you come up with anything else. But for example, you can just kind of freehand it, use a pen and just kind of mark your way through it. That was super messy, so we're gonna erase that and do it again. But one of the ways to do the Wheel of Life self-assessment is to just kinda create some sort of design. You kinda get a picture at the end of it when you work your way through each of the categories and mark out how you currently rank, and you'll see kinda that picture change, especially if you map the current year over the upcoming year and the future, you'll really see what things changed and didn't. But if you didn't like that, you can just erase it and then you can also, you know, just fill in each box. Again, it's totally based on personal preferences. These are just a few options using the marker, in this case, the highlighter, just to color it in and try out different ways to make it more colorful and more visually aesthetic. So I won't fill in the full wheel of assessment today, but what I do just want to show you guys is how you can get really unique and creative with it. Uh, at the bottom there for what I want to improve, it's really just a note section for you to either write it out, draw it out, however you want to visually depict what things you want to work on. It's just a great way for you to kind of write it out based on the wheel of assessment you just did. So once you've done your assessment, you actually want to take that and translate it directly into your goals page or your 2022 dashboard. So again, this is really a blank template for you to input your new year goals and 
I would recommend, you know, leaning on what you learned from your self-assessment on the previous page. But of course, it's totally your call on how you want to do this. And so the mantra we've got at the top, think of this as being kind of your flagship main statement, otherwise known as your mantra for the year. So something motivating how you want the year to be all described in one sentence. So another really cool feature about GoodNotes is this lasso tool. So at the top here, you can see I've clicked on it and what you can do is actually drag things around, resize it, especially if you've been writing small because it's just easier to write neater when you're writing small for some reason and it just allows you a bit more flexibility. So when it comes to actually inputting, you know, how you want your goals to look in each of the squares, this is where it really gets fun because you can, you know, write it out simply in plain text if that's what you want, or you can get really decorative and creative with what it looks like. So again, I'm just going to use that lasso tool, change it up a bit and, you know, make it a bit bigger and really play around with size, colors, all of that. So another fun thing to do is to add some color and dimension to it by using the different tools that they offer. So in this case, I'm using the highlighter a little bit thicker. It just, again, adds a bit more creativity to it. And here's an example of what one of these pages look like when they are complete. Again, what's fun about this is everyone's is going to look different. So just get creative and have fun. So now we're just going to move over into the planning section. So what I like to do here on this year at a glance view is just highlight important and key dates I need to be aware of. This is where you can use different colors to highlight key dates and you can use a legend at the top to indicate, you know, what color means what thing. Maybe one color means birthdays, another color means vacations. You can just customize this page. It's kind of like a blank template with not a ton of information, but you can get, again, pretty custom with it. So moving on to our monthly view, one of the cool things about this tool is that, yes, you have the option to kind of freehand like I'm doing here where, you know, you can just highlight the important dates. But there is also a shape tool where, you know, if your lines are not completely straight like mine here, you can actually use this tool at the top. And then as you make your lines, it's going to automatically create a shape. And I think that's just a great way to have, you know, a bit more like cleanliness and clean lines to your writing. And so it's just a good tool to play around with as you're using your planner. So another really cool tool here is the sticker option. So this is where GoodNotes has a bunch of these stickers preloaded already. Um, and what you can basically do is just add them, overlay them on top of the planner itself. So if you want to mark anything down, you can just insert a sticker and put it in there. Now moving on to the monthly theme page. Again, you can write, you can draw, do what feels best for you as you fill this in. I'd recommend doing it at the start of every month. The January dashboard, again, you've got a lot of different features or, you know, different layouts alone on this page. So it's good to get kind of precise as you're writing when you write out your goals, you know, number them, make a checkbox, use the lasso tool, play around with sizes. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of organize this page itself. So another cool thing about the lasso tool is you can really just kind of draw it around whatever you're trying to delete. So in this case, I did not like how that sentence turned out, even though it was just an example. I'm going to play around with the thickness, rewrite it for you guys. You can just see how easy it is to delete something and how easy it is to rewrite something and, you know, keep changing it up till you get something that you're happy with or that you like. Obviously, I'm not saying to spend a ton of time on this. It is custom to you and you have to just like the design and what you're doing. That's why I just kind of recommend playing around with it. You could just kind of write in it bare bones and you might be totally happy with that. And that is all good. It's not about, you know, spending time on making things perfect. It's all about having something effective that will bring you to the result that you want. And this is just kind of a way for you to have fun with it in the process. So now just moving on to the routine section, we've got, you know, a lot of structure already in place here, but we also wanted to keep it pretty open for you guys to kind of get 
flexible with how you set up the time and the routines and all of that. So how you want to do this is completely up to you. In this case, I kind of just wrote out the time, hyphenated it with the routine aspect that I'm doing that day and just kind of added that in there. So now just moving on to the habit tracker, there's again a few ways that you could fill this in or use it. You can use, you know, the general writing tool, but you can also play around with the shapes tool if you want it to be really precise as you fill in the bubbles each day. Uh, completely your call on how you want to structure this. It's uh, pretty flexible again, and you've got a few different options based on colors and all of that that you want to use. So again, I think for the brain dump page, you can, you know, make it custom based on all the different tools we used. Same thing with the journaling page for each prompt, you know, you can write on it directly. Um, when it comes to filling in the three circles, so what are you grateful for each day? You can, of course, just write things in. But one of the fun things to do is to actually just kind of add like emojis if you want to customize it and make it more fun. So for example, in this case, if I'm thankful for my bed today, um, if I actually insert a text box at the top here, um, I can actually just kind of click in on the emoji section, add something that I'm looking for, that specific emoji, insert it, put it in, And then similar to what we did previously with the lasso tool, we can just kind of wrap that around and make it bigger. Obviously, these are kind of fine, <laughs> fine details. I'm not saying you have to do these things. They obviously take time. Everything adds up. It's really just trying to show you guys, you know, all the different ways that you can customize it and make it your own and all the cool features within GoodNotes that can help you kind of achieve that look that you're looking for. So when it comes to the actual daily planner, um, if you are a follower of the work life or have been for a while, you'll probably recognize these daily templates and we are all about time blocking, which is why we want to make sure that this was included in the planner for the day. And so when it comes to time blocking, you have a few options. In this case, I'm going to just use the shape tool because I'll get that perfect box and, you know, block it off kind of pretty quickly, probably a fast way to do things. But of course, you can also freehand it and draw it in um, totally based on you and what you like. It's just, you know, again, showing you guys a few different options. Another tool that might be helpful for the time blocking section is to just use the highlighter. If you have the highlighter set on creating a straight line, you can just draw it right across and it will automatically format into a nicely shaped highlighted line like you'll see here. And so that's another good way to kind of customize it and make it your own as well. So all of these tips, tricks, hacks, you can use for all the pages throughout the planner. There's, you know, no right way or wrong way to do it. Just get creative and have fun with it and do what works for you. So now just flipping back to desktop, there is a GoodNotes app and Notability as well for a Mac. If you do have a PC, you can also use Adobe. It's just not as fluid of an experience as GoodNotes or Notability might be. So you can see here, I've opened the GoodNotes app on my Mac and since everything is synced with my iPad, it just pulls up the planner based on how it was set up and all the things I wrote down on my iPad. And so, yeah, you can see some of the tools, you know, they obviously don't work as fluidly because you don't have, you know, a pen or a stylus to go along with it. You're probably going to be more likely to type things in. You can kind of freehand. You're not going to have as much control, but you can achieve a very similar experience. It just might be a little more difficult or you might use it if you're looking for less of that drawing and creative aspect, but it is still very much doable to use this planner in desktop. You can use it on your phone if you're just kind of looking for a quick way to mark down what you're doing for the day. There are a lot of different options, so just get creative and do what feels best for you.